Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to cover the PACF or the partial autocorrelation function. If you haven't watched the ACF or autocorrelation video, uh, please go back and watch that before you watch this video because this video will actually build on the ACF video. Okay, so we're going to add the PACF to our tool vault here. Um, as I briefly mentioned in the ACF video, that's going to be used for fitting moving average models um, and also ARIMA models which contain moving average components. This video is going to be covering the PACF. Uh, this is specifically used to diagnose autoregressive models. Uh, and again, it is going to be one of the terms or the functions and the structure of an ARIMA or an ARMA or an ARIMAX or all these different types of models that are going to have autoregressive components. Okay, so before we start here, we need to go back uh, to the ACF here and look at this a little bit more. Uh, we had X, so we'll call this X of T, and we had some values like 21, 19, 18, 7, 12, um, and say 21. And then we are going to do the autocorrelation function, which is going to be X of T minus 1. So again, we have some missing value here. We'll call it NA, and then you have 21, 19, 18, 7, 12 and then we would have 21 here but we're going to scratch that off and then we're going to take the correlation um, of this piece and this would give us what we would call as i mentioned in the last video uh, the acf of lag one okay so this is just simple correlation you use a correlation function and you calculate out the correlation between these two something i did not mention which we need to do the partial autocorrelation is that um, the correlation of um, x of t and x of t minus 1 is going to be similar, not the same, but it's going to be similar to an OLS regression of x of t um, on x of t minus 1. Um, and this is important, so if we actually go into R here and do a quick calculation to show you how this works, uh, we're going to create two values here. Okay, so I'm not going to bore you with typing these out, but X and Y are going to be used as the data here. Uh, X is going to be essentially X of T in our example, and Y is going to be X of T minus 1. Uh, you can see that this Y column is just a shifted value of X, so we've moved up 17, 16, 14, 13, uh, and so forth. Uh, we added 21 here at the end. Just to get two series that are going to be the same length, I could have easily just dropped these two, the 24 and the 21. But anyways, we have these, we're gonna actually run these, so let's just put them down here into our console. And we have X and Y, and then we would like to get out uh, the correlation inside of R here between X and Y. And this is going to give us 0.68. Uh, what I just told you guys though is that you can actually use OLS to get a similar approximation to the correlation. Uh, and this has to do with the fact that correlation in general is going to be Pearson's correlation. Yes, there are other types of correlations such as Kindle's and Spearman's. Uh, but at the end of the day, most people use Pearson. Um, and we need to use Pearson because it is linear. And this is a crucial part when we start going into the partial autocorrelation function. Uh, but let's just run this regression real quick. Uh, you can have, so do a linear model inside of R. We're going to regress, um, in this case... We're going to regress y onto x and we're going to hit enter and we're going to look here at our y so the relationship that beta coefficient and yes we're going to still use an intercept term uh, is going to be 0.6961 which is quite similar but again it's not the same uh, to the correlation coefficient that was calculated using pearson's correlation so you can see here it's an approximation it gives us something similar so this is going to be important because um, when you start calculating correlations in the autocorrelation function, what we're really doing is all these values are baked in together. So if you think about the series we have here where it's the X of T and you have 21, 19, 18, 7, 12, and 21, if there is a autocorrelation component in a time series model, what we're saying is that um, the value here, so it's say time, you know, let's say time one, two, three, four, five, and six, we say that this first value, if this has sort of a correlation of 0.69, uh, it's affecting the value in the next period, and it has a 0.69% relationship with the next value. And then, you know, 19 is going to have a 0.69 relationship with 18, and it's going to essentially bake in all these values. So when you look at something like 21 down here, 
and you take an ACF calculation, um, say of lag, I don't know, three, sort of in quarterly, if this is monthly data, this is gonna be baking in the correlation of these past three values. Okay, so if we were gonna look at this in an equation form, what we'd be saying is that you know x of times six, so this value here we wanna be looking at, would be some combination here, um, say of row one, and then it's gonna be you know your x value, and then plus row two of some other x value, plus row three, and these t's here would be lag. So this would be lag of one, which in this case would be the fifth value here. So let's just put a little five here to indicate that. And then going back, it would be you know four, and going back, it would be x of three. Um, but realistically, you could rewrite this as row of time t minus one, x t minus one, plus row of t minus two, x of t minus two, plus row of t minus three, x of t minus three, and this would give us our x of t that we're going to be predicting. So what you see here in the ACF is that all of these different rows, they're kind of baked into each other, okay? And this is what gives us the concept of an autocorrelation function. Each component in the past is deriving um, the impact and driving forward that correlation, that serial correlation, that autocorrelation that we're seeing here. But in partial autocorrelation, we wanna do something a little bit differently. Okay, so now for the partial autocorrelation, what we really want is what is the exact impact of only one lag while controlling for the other lags so that they do not have an impact on our actual prediction here. So what we're looking for is let's say we had our x of t as before, and let's say we have 21, 19, 18, 9, 7, 21. I don't remember the exact numbers, but you have this, and then you have x of t, let's say minus 2, so we'd have na, na, and then you would have 21, 19, 18, and 9. And what we're saying is that we want to know the exact impact of only the second component. We don't want to know the lags in between. And in this example, we would have lag one would be impacting um, the x of t between these. So lag two and x one are being calculated in the autocorrelation function. Okay, so to actually calculate this partial autocorrelation function, um, let's say we want to know, again, the third lag partial autocorrelation function, the impact here. Um, we're just gonna use OLS regression. This is an approximation. This is supported in the time series analysis by James D. Hamilton textbook. Uh, I'm a big fan of this book, though it's quite detailed and mathematical. Uh, on page 111, under the partial autocorrelation functions, it does state here, a natural estimate of the mth partial autocorrelation is the last coefficient in an OLS regression of y on a constant and its m most recent values. And it gives the equation. I'll show you the picture here, what the text looks like. But this is academic um, support on how this is going to be done and why this is going to be done this way. And so you do the regression where you'd have your x of t, which is going to be equal to alpha, so some regression here. So this is going to be beta t minus 1 uh, of x of t minus 1. So this is going to be uh, lag 1. And then we're going to add, you know, beta t minus 2, x t minus 2 in the regression, which this would be... Uh, your lag two. And then finally, we're gonna calculate out beta of t minus three, x t minus three. And this is going to be our lag three. But in this case, all I want for this partial autocorrelation for three is going to be this beta, okay? I want the beta coefficient uh, for lag three to get the partial autocorrelation for lag three. This is going to give me um, the partial autocorrelation, you know, relationship between uh, x of t and x of t minus three while controlling for the other lag, so lag one and lag two. So this is called partial autocorrelation function because I'm only wanting this specific part. I do not want the entire structure, which is what the autocorrelation function would give you. So to do this in code, again, I'm not going to write out my own functions here. We're gonna use R to do this, but Essentially what you do in code, if you're gonna do this, is you have x of t is going to be alpha plus beta of t minus one, x of t minus one. Um, and this would give you your partial autocorrelation function for lag one. And then you'd rerun another regression. So this is going to be equal to alpha plus uh, beta t minus one, x t minus one, 
plus beta t minus two x t minus two. And in this case, we're only going to take the beta t minus two and that's going to give us our PACF of two. So up here again, right, this beta is going to be one and this beta is going to be two. Uh, and to generalize this notation, you just have X of T is going to be equal to alpha plus beta uh, T minus one, X of T minus one, plus, you know, all the terms in between that you would want, uh, plus beta of T minus N of X of T minus N. And then you'd use your beta here uh, to get your partial autocorrelation function of n. Okay, so let's actually do this in R. All right, so in the last video, we did the autocorrelation function. Let's just calculate that quickly so we can see what that looks like. We're gonna use the ACF function and we're gonna put in x. And in the last video, we just plugged this into the code. The reason this works is because we assume that this is going to be the ACF. This is the default setting. Um, what we're gonna end up using here though is we're going to be using type, so which is part of the commands. Uh, in this R code. And we're gonna put in here, let's just say correlation for this point. And correlation here is gonna give us the ACF. So to prove to you that this is the same. All right, if we copy and paste our ACF command here, we're gonna look, this chart down here is gonna be the exact same. You can see right now there's no arrows up here. So we only have one chart. If I paste this and run it, um, this chart looks the exact same. If you hit the back arrow and watch carefully, it'll be the exact same chart. Okay, so there's no difference. Um, but we want to calculate out uh, the PACF. We can do this by just typing in ACF using the same function, using the same data. And then instead we're going to put in here type is going to be equal to partial. Okay. And then we're going to use this, copy and paste. And you'll see now this chart is different. So this is the partial autocorrelation function as denoted over here on the y-axis. And when I hit this left arrow, you'll see it switches to ACF. So the ACF function here, something I should note, always has a lag of zero as the starting point. And you can see the decay in this chart here. In the partial autocorrelation function, it always starts at one. Um, this is in every software you will see, it always starts at one. And this is going to show you that the blue lines, again, are the significant levels that this data seems to have something that is going to be a autoregressive term of one. So a lag of one here, an AR1 process that we're looking at. Um, but again, you'll have to do testing and we're not going to go into the specifics in this video, but we will cover that in the future. Anyways, so to conclude this video, I hope you guys have the takeaway of that the autocorrelation function is going to be uh, the correlation function where everything's kind of building on itself. The correlations are building into each other over time. So we just simply take a correlation uh, of the different lags and you can get the ACF structure. For the partial autocorrelation function though, um, we wanna know what is the actual partial effects of one specific lag excluding all the other lags. To do this, we just simply take an OLS regression. Um, the other coefficients are used to control for the other lags. And then we use the final lag from that regression, but that regression is only to go to the point of that lag. So if you're testing for AC or PACF3, uh, you would only have a regression with three. If you continue to add more and more components, um, it will kind of change the dynamics of it. And so it won't technically be correct. So you need to continually do this as an iterative process to get these different bars for partial autocorrelation chart. And then finally, um, takeaway from last video and this video is that the ACF is going to be used to calculate out uh, the moving average components in a model. Whereas the PACF is going to be used um, to actually detect and try to measure the structures of the autoregressive components in a model. So anyways, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. <laughs>